Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about another feature inside of VE Gaia called the Bioclimate Tool. Just to review, the way that you're going to analyze your geometry is to bring it into a program such as Google SketchUp or Autodesk Revit or any other type of 3D modeling program that can export a green building XML file. You can also build the geometry directly inside of IES's virtual environment using Model It, the 3D modeling program. The bioclimate tool and most tools inside of Gaia are going to focus in on the early stages of design before we have finalized major design decisions. This is going to be the stage where architects are going to have the best chance to make big changes to the model with the least amount of impact on the cost and also very much the greatest opportunity to make a big impact um, before it's ever getting to the engineer. So that's what these tools are going to allow you to do, to hit that earliest stage of analysis using the 3D geometry that you've already created. So what we're trying to do is determine which model out of different options that we may have may be the best one to go forward with. And this may be before we have much idea about how many rooms are in the building or the layout of the spaces. And as we go through the design process, we're going to know more and more details about this building. So what you see here is a diagram of this process. When we're looking at the aesthetics of the building and possibly the orientation of the site, of the building on the site, we, want to, we have some general ideas about the design, but we may not know ex the exact layout. And this is the very early schematic stage. This is the stage at which we want to use the bioclimate tool. As we go into early design development and some of the later design development, you can see when we start to look at things like getting more specific with window layout. We can, then we move into testing things like material, the layout of buildings, window and wall ratios and shading options. Those are some other tools inside VE Guide that we'll be able to use and that we will cover in this series. But right now we're focusing on the schematic stage of design. So what we might know at this point is it's going to be an office. We're dealing with a typical office. We don't want to put in all the details about that and VE Gaia will allow you to stay on a very general level. Of course later when we need to customize this we do have the ability to do that. But it's important to remember, at the schematic stage, we just want to compare apples against apples. We're not coming up with the final building energy use per square foot or per square meter. That's not the goal at this point. We're going to have some vague ideas, and we're going to want to test those against each other. And as you can see at the bottom, is option A 10% better than option B, 20%, 30%, and what is the comparison basis that we're using? Okay, we've now moved into IES, and we're going to look at um, a fairly simple office building. And I'm just gonna bring up my model viewer here so that we can see what the model looks like. And we have some buildings that are surrounding our office building. And these are just going to be shading objects. And then we have the building itself. And you can actually see the um, ceiling area is accounted for here. And then we have um, details with the windows and more. To go into Gaia, again, we're going to navigate to our Navigators tab, and we're going to go to the drop-down menu. If you've recently used any of the analyses, they'll be shown at this section at the top, um, but you can just navigate down to VE Gaia and go into the Bioclimate Analysis. When you go into Bioclimate Analysis, there'll be some steps of what you want to set up. The first thing is to set your location and weather file. When I click on this, it's going to bring me into AP Locate. This will allow me to directly set up the weather file and um, the design weather data, anything that I need for this project. By bringing up the design weather data, I'm going to be able to set things such as my weather file that I'm using. I can look at my design weather data and my simulation weather data as well. However, if I've already set this up inside of SketchUp or Revit, I do not have to set this up again. It will have already been completed with the correct weather file assigned to my building. So you don't really have to go through here unless you have a specific reason. 
Once this has been completed and I'm fine with my weather file, I'm just going to close it down. I'm going to exit here by unchecking the little binoculars um, on the top generic toolbar. And I'm just going to click that this step has been completed and that I have checked the weather file. I can also add a note here to say that I have checked weather file. Um, just to make whoever's working on this project with me aware that I have gone through this and we have the correct weather file. And again, this is going to show as yellow. If we want, we can turn on this toggle and it will show the date and time and who created this or completed this step in the process. But I'll just turn this off for now. So bioclimate is a very easy tool. It's something that I would encourage you to use way before you get to this stage of analysis. Um, even when you have the footprint of the building, you should be coming into IES and opening bioclimate just to get some feedback on and inspiration on what you could be doing with your building design. Even before you have an idea about form, um, orientation, and any of those further details. Okay, so to bring this up, I'm just going to go to simulate. That's going to run through, and it's going to use my weather file to bring up a lot of this data. So before I explain exactly what bioclimate has for content, I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to look at the right, and you'll see what some of these references are. If you're an architect or a designer, you've probably seen some of these books, such as Sun, Wind, and Light, or Climate Considerations in Building and Urban Design, and also many other resources that we've taken this data from. And these are books that you've probably even used during college or time in the university, but they are going to give you ideas on how to design for the climate that you are in. And it's not going to tell you what exactly to do, but it's going to give you ideas for this climate, what are some options that I can begin to look at. So to start with, I'm just going to look at my climate file. It's going to tell me that summer is very hot in Abu Dhabi, which is fairly obvious. Um, but if you're dealing with a climate that you're not so familiar with or that you need some additional detail for, this is extremely helpful. The rainfall is very low. You have have typically strong midday or afternoon winds. This type of information can be very useful when you're looking at siting your building. It's also going to tell you your prevailing wind. Um, it will depend on your distance from the sea, but your trade winds are going to be from the east and you'll have local sea breezes. So if you're trying to orient your building to take advantage of natural ventilation or types of things or that are going to depend on wind or rain or these types of natural resources, you're going to find that information here. If we look at design priorities, now we're changing this from being about the just the weather, but also about for the building itself. What should we do? Minimize air infiltration, minimize day ventilation, and maximize night ventilation. Um, use solar energy potential, such as renewables and also use low humidity potential with evaporative cooling. So this is a very, not so, very possible that you can look at many different options at the same time. In regards to the microclimate, it will tell you where you can site your building, ideas about the urban street pattern, um, the orientation that would be the best, what's happening if I'm designing an urban layout, would compact planning of the urban form, shared shade is good in this case. Um, and again, it's all these things that you're probably aware of and that you've gone over, but it's going to remind you for this site, for this climate, these are some good ideas to address. Looking at the building macro form, compact or clustered plans to minimize day gain heat up, especially solar with permeable at night, um, increased surface area. Also, external open access corridors are possible here. Um, also, for the building on a microform, deep porches, penetrating plan might be a good idea. Um, ideas about the internal form of the building, an open plan design, absolute minimum resistance to airflow, for example, buffer zones. For construction, high levels of insulation, what type of thermal mass could be used, what type of mechanical could you just do natural ventilation or will you have to do mechanical? And in this case, obviously, you probably will need mechanical cooling. But in other places, you may be on that line and have a question, could we look at natural ventilation? Details on your windows and openings, shading and protection, 
more details on ventilation, um, wind catchers, types of spaces, taller spaces are good. Um, details with passive technologies that you could use, light shelves, double skin opaque facades, for example, because you have to make sure to have cooling load reductions, of course, but not gain too much light. Active technologies like thermal thermal um, and additional details on HVAC options that you could begin to look at. So also on the right hand side here, you're going to see it will give you ideas on and it gives you it gives you an analysis on the fact that this can be used for So on the right hand side, it will say details for further reading that you can go to, but also details about what this analysis is looking at. And again, it's not a complete solution, but it's meant to inspire you and to give you design ideas. And you can take this along with your instincts and your design knowledge and apply it to your model. And again, this is just one of the other features inside of the VE Gaia options. And you can see there's quite a few left that we can address in some upcoming videos. Okay, so that wraps up our overview of the VE Gaia bioclimate tool. Um, and there's certainly more tools that are available. So please come to our website, download the tools, test it out on your own models. Don't forget to download the white papers that are going to help you translate from SketchUp or Revit or other programs and see how you can start designing more green buildings today.